Hi y'all, welcome to my channel and in today's video I am going to be sharing what our family subjects are for the 2022-23 homeschool year. So stay tuned. Okay, so if you are new, welcome to my channel, Pursuing Peace. My name is Dina and I am a homeschooling mama of five kiddos, eight and under. And on this channel, I share my passions for Christ, for homeschooling and for encouraging mamas in their faith and in this amazing, even though it's a little bit crazy, it's still an amazing season of motherhood. So if you'd like to join me on this journey, then click the subscribe button down below and don't forget to click the little bell icon so you know whenever new videos pop up. You can also follow us over on Instagram at Dina underscore pursuing peace. Okay, you guys, well, it is the beginning of the school year and we are picking our curriculums. You probably already have your curriculum already picked out, um, but I explained why these videos of mine, my curriculum videos are coming out so late um, this year. I explained that all in my other curriculum video where I showed you guys what we picked for our individual subjects. That was for preschool, first, second, and third grade. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll leave that linked down in the description description box below, um, but today I wanted to share what we're doing as a family. We do some of our more individualized subjects, um, individually, <laughs> but history, science, nature study, um, all of those kind of things, we do it as a group together. Because if we tried to do those individually, it would be like we'd be doing school for eight hours a day and nobody got time for that, right? So today I'm gonna show you a little bit of what we do for our history, our science, um, a couple of things for science, like three things for science. I know, I'm going a little bit crazy this year, guys. <laughs> But so far they seem to be working. But anyway, so we're doing a few things for science this year. One of them is more of a nature study. So it's more on that line of science. Um, we kind of have a little bit of a hymn study and we have our read alouds. And so I'm gonna show you all of that today. And mostly when we do our our family subjects, it's during our symposium time or our morning basket time. Um, and we actually do our morning basket in the afternoon after lunchtime because um, it was just easier for us that way. And that's the, one of the benefits of homeschooling is you can do your schedule however you feel like it. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm gonna show you inside of each of these books. Okay guys, so here is our spine for our family subjects, for our history, science, and all of those. This is um, Classical Conversations, and you have probably seen this before if you have watched any of my videos before. Um, I kind of go through this very much in detail, and I have a whole um, playlist about CC, and I can leave that in the description box below, but I'm just gonna kind of give you an idea of what this covers. Um, we do this as part of a community. This is all a little bit different. It, it, it goes in cycles. There's cycle one, which is ancient history, is which we which, which we did last year, and then this is cycle two. So this covers medieval to modern history. Modern history being everything except American history, because in cycle three we will cover American history fully. So. That's what that covers. So let me show you the subjects that we have here. So we have math, just a little bit of math. It's just some skip counting and some different things like that. It's not, um, we do need to have a separate math curriculum. Just a little bit of math. Latin, um, science, English, timeline from creation all the way to present day, um, history, geography, and then every week in community, we do science projects and we do a fine arts project. Um, so, and there's 24 weeks. So half of them is a fall semester, half of them is a spring semester. And so we go through and it basically is just sentences that our kids memorize. Right now they are sponges. As if you have this age kids, you know that they are sponges sponges and so we just go through and we memorize all of these sentences so for example we have here multiplications they learn to skip count by ones which is 
basically just counting and then <laughs> and then skip count by twos which every one of these has a song to it so it's like two four six eight ten twelve fourteen and it just keeps going skip counting by twos and fives and tens and all of that like that's very practical for my kids um, and has helped them a lot um, so this we're learning the first conjugation endings present tense and again there's a song it's ost wait no i don't even know the song <laughs> Mustis and man, I completely forgot the song right now. Oh man, um, but there is a song to that, so it's easy. Again, there's another song here. Timeline is one giant song that we learn all year. We're learning the eight parts of speech, Charlemagne, continents and oceans. So there's just different things. So by the end, they should know a lot about it. So we take this, and I will take like the history sentence, and we will just get books out at, from the library about this we'll watch shows and i'll show you a little bit more on how i do that in just a little bit so basically that is what covers all of that so we do this during our symposium time which is our morning basket time so we do that then and i have a video showing how we did morning basket last year and how we're doing it this year is just a tad bit different um so i can do a video about that also and how we how i do this on a daily basis but i want to show you if you are part of cc and you have enrolled um then you have access to what's called the sandbox easing and the sandbox easing, you guys, is amazing. And one of the things, just one of the things that comes in the sandbox easing is this. It's morning time plans. And it has recommended reading for all, um, for every week. So it basically lays out for you what to do, you guys, which I love this. And so we do a hymn study. And so for our hymn study this week, we've been singing Crown Him With Many Crowns. And so what I will do is I will just take our hymnal, we have this one, um, and I will make copies for all of the kids and they'll keep them in their binders. And then the first thing we do is we pray and then we'll sing through this hymn. And what's funny though is that this hymn book doesn't even have that hymn in it. So I had to find it online, <laughs> but it's okay. It's easy and I can still print it out for them and everything. Um, and so we just sing it all together. We talk about it a little bit. Um, what I would like to do too is maybe um, look up the history of each of the hymns. It seems like there's one hymn per week. So look up the history of each of the hymns and just um, kind of dive deeper into it just a little bit because my kids are still young. So, you know, just a little, little bit um, of familiarity with hymnals. Um, and then scripture. So we are learning, we are memorizing Genesis 1, 1 through 27 all year. So this is breaking it up by week. So this week we are just working on Genesis 1, 3, and 4. Um, and so then we do that. We actually do that during breakfast, so we don't do it during this time. And then we work on our memory work. And here you can decide, I love the way they laid this out, because you can decide which subjects you want to do on which day. I basically just went down the line. So on day one, which community days are always on different days, our community day is on a Wednesday. So our day one is actually on a Thursday. So it's kind of weird, um, but it, it's fine. We've already done that for a whole year and it's fine. You just have to get used to whatever day your community day is and, and just work with it. It'll be really, it really will be okay. <laughs> and then so Latin, we do Latin and math. Um, on day one, then we do science and English, then we do history and timeline, then here we do geography and Bible. Um, in here we have something too, and I'll show you in just a bit. And then here are, are our read-alouds and our picture study that is also in the, um, the picture study is in the easing, um, I'm sorry, the sandbox easing, okay? And I'll go through this a little bit more. I'll show you what's in back here. But I wanted to show you this too. There's recommended reading. So this is what I say when I say we just read books on the subject. I just go down here, check out what I can from the public library, um, see what we have. If it's a book that I really, really want, then, um, and I can't get it at the library, then I'll just buy it off of Amazon. So I'll do that. And then it tells you the story of the world, which books um, kind of correlate to that. We're listening to the story of the world, um, volume two, but we're actually just listening straight through it. So we're not even kind of following that because I just want to, I want them to have a chronological order of history. So basically what I have this, and this, you guys, this little folder I got at Walmart. So 
yeah, I don't know if I can find it, link down below. But this is another sheet from the Sandbox Easing, and it gives you ideas on how to do your memory work. So like math, you know, when we count our threes, swim with your arms to count by threes, enchant the threes times table, here jump back and forth. Um, what we did for math one day is we were actually learning about the English Channel and I told them about the channel that goes in between England and France. And so we actually formed a train and we were marching <laughs> around um, as we were chanting our threes and chanting our fours so I mean you can do whatever you want this just kind of gives you kind of a good like kind of an inspiration you know to to um, do your memory work in kind of a fun way with your kids instead of having them sit which I did before I had them sit um, for the whole thing and um, I just wanted to incorporate this a little bit more. This is really great for tutors. If you are a tutor, um, these helps here are really good. Um, over here is another one that we have and it gives you just basic like here's something you can do for timeline, here's something you can do for geography, here's something you can do for history and these are different every week. Sometimes I do them, sometimes I don't. Um, they have little coloring sheets like this um, not all the time they have different activity sheets. So when we're doing our read-alouds, my kids can just color this, you know, and then their little hands are busy, but their ears are open. See, they have Latin charts. Um, this is something that we're working when we're doing five circles of latitude, which I want them to do every week. Oh gosh, I'm sorry guys, and honestly, there's no, there's nothing in here because we're almost done with our <laughs> with our week but there's so many different activity sheets and all kinds of stuff on the sandbox easing we used to have to pay for it it used to be part of a, a cc connected that we had to pay but now this year if you are enrolled in a cc community you get that for free so um check it out guys really check it out it is so so stinking good okay and so all of these down here are our um, read aloud. So we have Old World Echoes, and guys, even if you don't have, um, are not a part of CC, this is so good, and you can still buy it. I will link it down below. Um, and it's just a compilation of classics, specifically during the medieval time. So this is like middle history. I um, mean, it's just a compilation of classic um, folk tales and legends and myths and poems and just all kinds of stuff guys and my kids will sit and listen to these they love this stuff and CC has ancient world echoes um, and it has old world e old world echoes and then it has new world echoes so whichever history um, you are learning they've got one for that time period so go and check that out something else that we are doing for our read alouds is exploring the heavens with uncle paul and these are all about um different things honestly guys i'm not even sure <laughs> but again they're stories they're, they are stories. Let me see. Making the greatness of the sky, clouds, and weather approachable and even tangible to a child is no small feat. But these stories will draw your children along on an expansive adventure when you read Exploring the Heavens with Uncle Paul. Okay, so, and we've read, I think maybe just the first one so far. Because this one, yeah. This is about caterpillars. Yeah, the processionary caterpillars. Oh my gosh, and they loved this one. Um, and then the storm. So the storm is next and that's week two. And so we'll read this one. I think so this one is a little shorter. It only has one story per week and it is, but it is so good. You guys, another one of our read alouds that I got from CC is senators of Rome. They also have Kings of Rome, which I did not get last year. Um, kind of bummed because it's kind of a, a story not really a story but it does go through chronologically um but this is pretty good and it now it's talking about the senators of rome so the history of rome um and all of that and we've we've really enjoyed it so far we've read two of the stories so far and the kids have really enjoyed this one also so those are our like main read alouds and we've been following this so far so old world old world echoes day one we read this one and then we read this one 
and then Senators of Rome, we read this one today. Tomorrow we'll read this story, and then we'll read The Storm from Exploring the Heavens with Uncle Paul. Um, and guys, I just love, here, look, I, I just love having these read, read alouds here and having all the like good classic literature and stories that I, guys, I wouldn't even know to, to read to my kids. And I wouldn't know where to find them. I wouldn't know which one is the best one. So just having this all here and it's just something that we do and we read, oh, it just makes my life so much easier and our life so much richer um, because it's just all laid out for me. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you inside this sandbox easing. It um, easing just means it's an electronic magazine. Um, and CC puts this out for um, every week. Um, so there's 24 of these. So this one specifically is for week four, cycle two. Um, there's a lot of articles in here. Here's a table of contents. Um, they kind of show you how um, the foundation for the foundation's memory work for this week, how that's going to help you in the challenge years, which is your high school years. Um, they have a recommended podcast episode. And then here is that sheet that um, you had seen earlier. So they have one of these for every week. And something I didn't point out earlier that I wanted to point out now is that um, these they have these um, uh, rec recommended reading. So I go through and I just see how many of these are in our local library and um, which one ones are there, then we get them out and we read them for the week. Um, and then it's got this picture study here. Um, they have this where it shows you how to do the five core habits. Um, if you do, you're not part of classical conversations, then um, that's that's okay. But th this is specifically part of classical conversations. Um, here's that sheet where it shows you what to do as far as the memory works. Like for English, clap along as you recite the list of nominative pronouns. You know, so it just gives you ideas on how to um, actively um, memorize your memory work. <laughs> um, then here are some examples. Again, these are the five core habits. Um, and it gives you examples of how you could do that with this week's memory work. It always has this like um, kind of an uplifting article. Um, it's got history activities. So this goes beyond the history sentence, which I really love because um, it just adds a little bit more structure to your school week. Um, and again, all of this is 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 um, optional. So you do not have to do all of this. But if you're like me, I wanted more than just history sentences. Um, I wanted to know what to do with it. So I love that it recommends books. It helps you um, and it helps you with like the different activities here too. Um, and, and you can do them and you cannot. I will go through and I will read them for the week. And if, um, if I feel like we can do it, it's doable, then um, I will do it. And if not, then we'll just memorize the history sentence. Um, here's an activity for science. And then you've got all of these printables. So I think this was one of the activities for science up here, right? Yeah, raising radishes. So it's got this for you. Um, this is timeline stuff. Now all of these, these are our um, black line master uh, maps mm -hmm. for geography. Um, let's see. And then these are all printables. And these printables, this one specifically was made by CC, I believe. But a lot of these printables, so this kind of just helps you with the memory work. See, it's got geography, Latin, English. Um, this is for timeline. This is for Latin. Um, and if it has this little CC mark, it means that it was, um, it's like the property of CC. Um, and then you've got these that like just moms created moms or dads, um, CC moms or dads that, um, created and, um, we can use them and CC kind of put the best ones in and, um, they're all right there, you know? <laughs> so it's really neat. So here are just a bunch of tracing. I will probably use these at some point when I think that my kids just need a little bit more practice in their handwriting. Um, but look at here, guys. So look, and then there's a whole bunch of here, cutting and pasting. Um, they even have these, which are, um, this is what we did as a science experiment on community day. Um, so I don't really do this at home because we did it on community day. So <laughs> here's for math. And then they've got different levels too. So sometimes I'll print these out for my like eight, almost nine year old. And then they've got smaller ones here. Oh, this is one of my favorites <laughs> where they color it. 
um, and then they can cut it up and paste it here um, in the right order, um, counting by sevens. So I love that. So, so it, it kind of goes, it can be from your kindergartner all the way up to your um, middle schooler. Let's see, it's just more things for math, timeline, English, um, geography. This is a really neat geography map. It's sometimes I like to do different maps or use different maps um, to just make sure that they know the information well. Oh gosh, what is this? Oh, abstract art. Okay, I'm seeing this for the first time with you, so. <laughs> Um, wonderful, and then they've got this whole section of old world echo. Sorry, old world echo activity pages, um, and see they've got coloring sheets so they can color while I'm reading about these, um, and then um, dot to dot, and then they can color. They've got tanagrams. So they can use their tanagrams. I, I believe they're supposed to have tanagrams here. I'm not really sure what happened, but and it shows you the answer key. But we have tanagrams just lying around because we use the good and the beautiful. Um, and then we also just love tanagrams. So we have tanagrams lying around so we could just use those to create this ship. Um, they have origami stuff. Oh, these are one of our favorites where it's coloring by number because it takes them a while to do this. And so it gives me time to read as they are doing this. So, <laughs> all right, and that was it. That was the last page. So guys, if you have access to the Sandbox easing, if you are enrolled in CC Connected, then go and check it out. It is so good and it has helped us so much. So yeah, so this is the Sandbox. All right, so that is our history and our read aloud. We do, um, and for science, we mostly do our like science projects at CC Community, but this year we are going to do little hearts and hands <laughs> um, from the good and the beautiful. And guys, we've done one lesson. This is so cute and so gentle. For the most part, my four-year-old, she doesn't really want to sit with us for symposium. And she has in the past, but for some reason this year, she's just not having it. And so I'm okay with that. So her and my two-year-old just go off and play. Um, but this one is made for preschoolers through second grade. So I do have her come and um, join us while we do this one. And so we've got activities. So this was the first lesson we did here. And so we did trees, and, we, and this actually went really well with our sentence for that one. It was talking about conifer, coniferous forests and deciduous forests, and so this actually went really well. <laughs> I love it when it lines up like that and it doesn't even mean to. So here's a poem that I read. The Good and the Beautiful has movies, and they watch the trees that live and sleep. Um, then we went through and we talked about it, so there's discussion questions. Here's an optional activity. We did not do this because we were running super late that day. So I'm like, oh, we'll just do this one a little bit later. Um, so the lessons are super short, you guys. That was it. That was lesson one. Here is an opening and again, like a poem. I, I might have my older one read it. Here's story time and I'll show you what that means a little bit later. Here's an optional activity. Pine cones, evergreen branches, magnifying glass and tweezers. We might do that one. Now we now live in South Carolina. I mean, no, we used to live in South Carolina, which pine, pine cones were plentiful. <laughs> we could just walk outside and grab like so many pine cones. We could just go into our backyard. Here in Arizona though, it's a little bit harder. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to go find, I've seen a few pine trees and conifer trees around here, so I'm gonna have to go and um, check that out. Um, but we definitely can't just go in our backyard, so that's gonna be a little bit harder, but it's definitely still doable. Discussion questions, and then another optional activity. And that's basically how the lessons go, guys. Super easy, super short, um, fun for the kids, and because it, it's not super long, doesn't have a lot of, like science experiments and all of that stuff because really just talking about it, watching movies, reading books, reading stories, that's how they learn right now. So it's just 
gorgeous. When they ask for the read aloud, here it comes with this too, the big book of science stories. And so this is what it's talking about. So that that next time that we do a lesson, it's said to do to read this one, Lucia's Christmas Fair. So we'll go through and we will cuddle up on the couch and we will read through this. Oh my gosh. Oh, and they're going to love it. They love to cuddle up. At least they have lately. No noise, please. And so we'll just go and we'll read through this. Just like a picture book, right? And there's another story there. So just like a picture book, we'll go through. And gosh, this matches so well with what we're learning. <laughs> and so I'm really super excited for this. We're actually, let me show you. So this we only do once a week. So we do it when we do our science memory work. We do it here. So we'll do science, English, we'll do our memory work for that. And then we'll take time to do this because um, we only have one read aloud that day. So we'll take time to do that. Honestly, it only takes 10, 15 minutes. So yeah, guys, so that is the science that we're using for this. Okay, and another thing that CC provides, it's not part of Community Day, but it does um, provide it in here, in this book, is our, um, they provide Bible sentences. And so we hadn't done it in the past, but I thought it would be a really good idea to do it. So I added it on here. So on our day four, we do geography and Bible. The sentence that we're trying to do right now is, um, what are the names of the eight significant judges of Israel? And when we were trying to memorize them, I was like, well, there's no song to go along with it. And <laughs> And I found that it was hard for my kids and for me, honestly, to memorize them. So I looked, tried to look up a song for it. And as I was looking up, I stumbled across a shop called Driven by Grace. And she has songs for each of these lessons to correlate with um, all of the different weeks for the Bible memory sentences in CC. And she has this whole curriculum. So I'm just gonna show you this lesson for right now. So this is the overview of Judges. So um, the eight names are broken up in two parts. So it's part one and part two. So this is lesson two, part two. Um, so this is the memory sentence right here. What are the names of the eight significant, oops, sorry, the eight significant Judges of Israel. And here are the first four, and then here are the second four, which is what we're learning in lesson two. She gives you Bible readings on um, where they're at in scripture, and then additional learning, like we can watch Superbook. Um, and then she recommends the complete illustrated children's Bible, and she tells you where to read in that children's Bible. And so then... I'm going through and I am reading this, but I will show you. Here are the worksheets for the kids. So as I'm reading all of that, they are doing this. So here they're tracing, they're coloring. This was last week. And then they have different different options. So if, like my eight-year-old um, did this fairly quickly and I wasn't done reading. And so there was this other thing that she was able to do, which is color Gideon and his fleece. There are crossword puzzles, word searches, double word puzzles, um, a narrative journal where you can they can color what they've learned about that judge or about that subject. Um, and there's just so much like that. And there's stuff like this for every week. There's songs for every Bible memory sentence. There's worksheets, there's lessons. So we went through and we read, actually I haven't read this one yet. But so I'll go through and I'll read this um, as they're doing their activities. We'll talk about it a little. If I find that it's too much, then I'll just kind of summarize it and cut it down a little bit more. And then, oh, that's right. It has review questions so y'all can talk about it a little bit further. If there wasn't discussion before, it's got an, um, kind of an overview of the judges. Um, there are sources. It's just so good, you guys. It's laid out. Visually, it's very appealing to me because <laughs> it's it's not just a bunch of words. You know, it's really good. It's got pictures. Um, I love that it's got the watch stuff here. So I will link all of this down below 
but you can get the hard copy, um, but obviously it's more expensive. So I just got this um, and I will just print it off as we go and I will, I'm just keeping it right here in this um, little folder that I had. I used it last year for my, <laughs> for my um, class that I tutored, um, but I will keep it in there just for right now and that's basically, that's basically it. Okay, you guys, so it is no secret that I adore Beautiful Feet books, and they just came out with a brand new curriculum for nature study and, and for geography, but geography, um, it's specifically for um, U.S. history, and we're not doing that this year, so I'm waiting on the geography. Guys, I really wanted to get it. <laughs> really wanted to get it but um so i'm going to show you here they have a new kind of science but it's um nature study pack it's called seasons of field it's brand new um and it's got all of these books guys i'm going to see if i can see if i can get these so it has all of these books within the pack now with any just like with any other beautiful feet um, package you can if you want just get the teacher's guide and then figure out how you're going to get these books um, either you can get them from your local library or you can get them um, on thrift books or amazon um, i normally just buy the entire pack because I don't want to have to go looking for them. But this time around, I actually did just get the, the teacher's guide. And I went to our library because, guys, we have one of the best libraries oh, that I have ever seen. And so they had a good amount of these books. And so I'm going to be able to get them out. But then also I was able to find a few of these on Amazon and thrift books. And I... I if I were you, I would check both um, because sometimes thrift books is cheaper and sometimes Amazon is cheaper, which is interesting, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, these are all picture books and they are so good. We've read a few of these, um, like Miss Maple Seeds, Owl Moon, The Year of the Perfect Christmas Tree. We have done a few of these. So I'm gonna show you inside the Seasons of Field Teacher's Guide. I just ordered this like yesterday's. Um, September 1st was the first day you could order just this, the Teacher's Guide. And so I just ordered this, um, but I do have the digital copy. So whenever you order it, you will get a digital copy. So that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so here's the Seasons of Field Teacher's Guide for, this is for primary grade. So you've got K through third grade. Um, and it's part of their Beautiful Feet science curriculum. So this is a science curriculum, but is definitely more in the nature study vein of science. Um, so, oh gosh, and you guys, I really wish I had this, you know, to show you. Maybe when I get it um, in the mail, I'll do like an Instagram story about it because these books are just gorgeous. These are gorgeous books and this this um, digital copy doesn't do them justice. <laughs> okay, so this introduction, so, so the way that this works is Season of Field is intended to, to provide a full year of nature science lessons for primary students, kindergarten through third grade. We have designed six seasonally based field guides to take you on a journey through the na natural world. Each field guide is made up of three nature studies. Each nature study includes four lessons using literature, field science, notebooking, and outdoor exploration to awaken a love of nature science in your children. You will want to enjoy two lessons per week to complete the curriculum in one school year. So two lessons a week to complete it in one school year. You can always use it like you do one lesson a week and use it in two different years at least I don't know maybe you can I don't know I haven't really looked at it <laughs> so story lessons allow you to engage with the scientific principle through story and then they've got field work lessons your field work lesson would be an activity such as an experiment or handicraft um, then notebooking lessons so they're using watercolor with me in the forest which is one of the books to guide you through a variety of watercolor techniques um, and slow down and wander lessons. This is your day to get outside, whether it be your own backyard, a nature preserve, a beach, or a pond. We refer to this as your wild place. <laughs> the weekly lesson will include opportunities to learn, explore, and play. Um, so further explanation. So it's got picture study, handcrafts, and field to table, which is neat. 
um, the logbook, um, field notes, watercolor cards. Oh, I'm not sure if I actually got these watercolor cards. Um, I might have to go back and get those. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, additional resources. Oh, they've got these library connections. So they tell you, they give you ideas of other books that you can get from the library to just help, help enhance that lesson. Um, art supplies, nature identification resources, um, a note on methodology. Okay, I'm not really sure what that is. Um, so then meet the authors of all the different books. And then it goes through and tells you all the different books there. Um, so yeah, guys, I'm really excited about this one. Again, like I said, just look how beautiful it is. It's so beautiful. Um, I'm Again, like I said, I'm not sure exactly. <sighs> uh, because we are just, I don't know. I love beautiful feet books. Um, sometimes going out into nature stresses me out a little bit. I'm going to be honest, completely honest with you. Um, but since we live in a nicer area, um, it, there are a lot of critters around here, so don't get me wrong. But since we do live in a nicer area, I don't know, maybe, maybe I will try exploring more. Who knows? This might awaken a new, a new side of me that... <laughs> That I never saw before so anyway so um, yeah so this is just kind of flipping through and showing you all the different lessons so I believe that was I'm not sure if this is going into a different season or how it works it would be easier if I actually had had it in my hands there's nothing like having it in your hands so um, so yeah guys so this is just a little glimpse of it again if you want a little bit deeper um, glimpse of it and see how we've been using it then let me know down in the comments and I'd be happy to accommodate that at some point um, maybe mid-year when I've um, kind of wrapped my brain and my hands around it um, then I can let you know what we think about it oh I love this I love it I can't wait to get this <laughs> All right, you guys, well, that was it. Those are our family subjects. If you have any questions about any one of those, leave them down in the comments below, and I'd love to chat with you and um, answer any questions you have. All right, well, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you know when my next video will come up. I'm planning on doing um, videos about my my homeschool planner, my new one, um, a day in the life video of our, of our new routine, um, and just different ones like that that you guys have requested. Um, and if you would like a specific video, then just let me know down in the comments below and I'd love um, to help you out with that. And let's be friends. Follow me over on Instagram at Dina underscore pursuing peace. All right, you guys, well, I hope you're having a blessed day and I will see you in my next video. Bye homeschool year so stay tuned <laughs> a little bit okay so if you are new welcome to my channel my name is Dina and I'm a homeschooling mom of a large family <laughs> yes five kids our main subjects like our math English and then some kind of more individualized subjects um, the big book of science stories. <laughs> you like that, folks? Don't put it in the bloopers.